Now we're going to learn about the spinal cord. Suppose uh, this is the spinal cord, you are seeing a section of the spinal cord. Okay, that is the anterior aspect with the anterior median fissure and this is the posterior aspect with the posterior median sulcus and uh, here you are seeing the H shaped grey matter if you imagine like that and this is central canal, this is a cut surface and this is a segment of the spinal cord, a cut piece of the cylindrical spinal cord. Then around the spinal cord you have and investing the pia matter. The pia matter will be adhered onto the spinal cord tissue. Okay, it will be adhered. You, you cannot practically strip off the pia matter from the spinal cord tissue. Around this pia matter, outside this pia matter, you have an arachnoid matter. Arachnoid matter is a flimsy layer. It's a translucent, spidery, web-like layer. Underneath the arachnoid, you have the subarachnoid space. So this much is the subarachnoid space. The subarachnoid space will be filled with CSF and within the subarachnoid space you have blood vessels. So here I am representing a blood vessel here. So you should know that the subarachnoid space is the location where you have blood vessels and the blood vessels will be bathed within the CSF. This is the same format in the brain also. In the brain the cerebral vessels will be in the subarachnoid space. That's why and a subarachnoid hemorrhage will have the bleeding going into uh, the spaces where you have CSF. So this is the same format. Now outside uh, arachnoid you have a thick fibrous layer and that is called the dura matter. So this is the dura matter. If you remember the division of the meninges, you have the pachy meninges or the thicker meninges that is the dura matter and lepto meninges or the thinner meninges which is pia matter and arachnoid matter. And in this we are going to learn today about the pile modifications. The pia will send off a septae into the nervous tissue. For example, the posterior median septum, septations that are within the spinal cord are all pile modifications. Another important uh, modification of the pia is at the lower end. Let us look at the lower end. In the lower part, the spinal cord will form a conical projection and this is called the conus medullaris. The spiral sleeve that you had, that will continue below the lower part of the spinal cord. You know that the lower part of the spinal cord is almost at the level of L1 vertebra, but beyond that, the pile extension will continue downwards and that is called the phylum terminal. So phylum terminal is not a nervous tissue. It is just a pile extension. You imagine this to be a cylinder, the cylinder becomes a cone, but the sleeve that was around it, that continued as the phylum terminal. Okay. Now, if you uh, look at the what happened to the arachnoid and the dura, the arachnoid will continue like this. Okay. The arachnoid along with the dura around it, that will continue like this. This is called the dural tube. Now you can see the dural tube. The dural tube will extend much more below and the arachnoid will be investing on its inner aspect. So you can easily understand that here you have subarachnoid space filled with CSF. That CSF space will be below the L1 vertebra or below the spinal cord. That CSF space will be dilated. And this is called the lumbar cistern. So this is the place where uh, you can introduce a needle, an LP needle, a lumbar puncture needle uh, by which you can tap the cerebrospinal fluid without injuring the spinal cord. Okay, so this is called the phylum terminal internum. Why I called it internum? Because this is within the dural sac. So this phylum terminal internum will actually continue downwards. The dural sac lower point is at the S2 level. Beyond that, it will continue as the phylum terminal externum. The total length of phylum terminal is 20 centimeter. 15 centimeters within the dural sac. The rest 5 centimeters outside the, the dural sac. That is beyond the S2 level. The phylum terminal will eventually attach to the cossex. Now another point that you need to know is this uh, spinal cord which is actually a cylinder extending much upwards it is actually divided into small segments okay the segmental division is based on how the spinal nerves are arising from the lowermost suppose this is the coccygeal segment from the coccygeal segment you will have the coccygeal nerve roots emerging and that will exit like this okay coccygeal nerve roots so the point where the coccygeal nerves arise is the coccygeal spinal segment. Above that you will have an S5 spinal segment. Above that you will have the S4 spinal segment. So like that you can see all the nerve roots that are dangling down uh, from the lower part of the spinal cord throughout the lumbar system. 
and this formation is called the corda equina it looks like the horse tail why is it called horse tail actually the tail ends at this point but the hairs of the horse tail will dangle downwards just like you have spinal nerve roots dangling downwards if you look at the corda equina carefully the corda equina contains nerve roots and the phylum terminal the phylum terminal is non nervous so this structure is the cornus cornus is at the level of l1 below the level of l1 you have the corda equina now if you take one spinal segment that spinal segment will not give off a single root it will actually give off multiple nerve rootlets and these nerve rootlets will join to form the spinal nerve that will exit at a lower level okay if i take the spinal segment out like this the, this is one spinal cord segment okay you have the posterior nerve roots arising like this the anterior nerve rootlets will be arising like this and in between that you have another pile modification and that pile modification is called ligamentum denticulatum so i'll just show a ligamentum denticulatum okay something like this it will be a toothed process okay that is why it's called denticulate ligament it looks like a tooth so you have toothed processes of ligament and denticulatum between the posterior uh, nerve rootlets and the anterior nerve rootlets on the other side this is a posterior view if you think that this is a spinal cord between the posterior nerve rootlets and the anterior nerve rootlets lies the ligament and denticulatum which is actually an elongated structure with toothed processes the tooth processes will be Uh, piercing the arachnoid and will be anchoring on to the dura so the pile modifications are the pile septa the ligamentum denticulatum the phylum terminal and also in the anterior median fissure region the pile will be modified and into a thickening that is called the, the linea splendens okay that is called the linea splendens these are the pile modifications now we are going for a demonstration of the gross anatomical aspects of the spinal cord this is the dural tube in which you have the spinal cord enclosed inside it i am going to open this this is an incision on that dural tube and we are going to open it we are now seeing the spinal cord inside it with the nerve roots so first we need to orient this you can see the spinal cord is in the cranial aspect and caudally you can see a lot of nerve roots in the upper aspect you can see few nerve roots but in the lower aspect you can see an increased density of nerve roots so that is how we can identify the cranial and the caudal aspects of the spinal cord this is the posterior aspect of the spinal cord and on the other side you have the anterior aspect how we can understand that that will come to that later under the dura you have another flimsy layer very thin layer over here and that is called the arachnoid matter why i say that this is arachnoid matter is because underneath the arachnoid matter you can see blood vessels you are actually seeing the blood vessels through that translucent arachnoid matter here you can see a breach in the arachnoid if i lift the arachnoid you can see the blood vessels underneath it it is a flimsy spider web like layer but underneath that you can see blood vessels and underneath the blood vessels there is a spinal cord tissue so that spinal cord tissue has an investing pia matter so there you have pia matter this is arachnoid matter and this is the tough dura matter all right now we are going into more details of the lower aspect okay this is the lower aspect of the spinal cord if you look carefully the spinal cord is uh, decreasing in its thickness and it forms a conical formation in the lower aspect and that is called the cornus medullaris from the cornus medullaris distally you just have a pial extension okay this is a pia mater extension uh, you imagine the pia mater was investing the spinal cord the spinal cord ended at the cornus medullaris and beyond that you just have the sleeve of pia mater extending down this is called the phylum terminal it is just a pia mater it is not nervous tissue this phylum terminal is lying in between the dangling nerve roots so these nerve roots are called corda equina the phylum terminal is not part of the corda equina but it is lying along with the so many corda equina nerve roots now if we look into an upper part of the spinal cord so from the posterior aspect you can see a lot of roots exiting out you can see one root coming out from small nerve rootlets so these are the posterior nerve root and the posterior nerve rootlets from this point it is piercing the dura and it is exiting out from the dura now if we look very carefully the, i told you this is the posterior aspect in front of this nerve roots you can see a triangular 
a, a, a whitish structure. It is very minute. I, I will hold it with my forceps. Okay, this structure. This is called the ligamentum denticulatum. Ligamentum denticulatum is a pile modification. The ligamentum denticulatum, as you can see in this, it is anchored onto the dura. If I just pull the dura like this, you can see it get, giving attraction onto the ligamentum denticulatum. So, this is the apex of that ligamentum denticulatum that is anchored onto the dura. On the other side of the ligamentum denticulatum, you have more nerve roots. Those nerve roots are the anterior nerve roots. I will make it more clear if I lift. I will make it more clear uh, in, in this view if I lift it. These are the posterior nerve roots. Beyond that, I will just keep it away and you can see the ligamentum denticulatum. Beyond the ligamentum denticulatum, you can see further nerve roots. These are the anterior nerve roots. I look at this same structure on the other side. I will just turn the spinal cord to see the other side of it. On the other side, you can see again the spinal cord, the dura is now removed away. See the arachnoid, a flimsy layer arachnoid. If I uh, try to strip off the arachnoid like this, if I just try to peel off the arachnoid like this, you can see the anterior nerve roots descending down. Okay, this is the anterior nerve roots. Now, I want you to see one more important structure. This in the anterior median aspect, you can see a glistening white layer, a white glistening layer. I will just tilt it to see that glistening aspect. That is called the linea splendens. So, the linea splendens, the ligamentum denticulatum and the phylum terminale, these three structures are pile modifications that you see in the spinal cord and this is very commonly asked question. Now, I just want to mention one more structure that is interesting. These are all uh, spinal arteries which is supplying the spinal cord. If you look carefully in the point where you have the nerve roots exiting, you can see one vessel climbing up and feeding these spinal arteries. These are called radicular arteries. You can see another radicular artery over here. These radicular artery will enter into the spinal cord area through the nerve roots and that will feed the spinal arteries. These radicular arteries are very important in the blood supply of the spinal cord. Now, on the anterior aspect, we uh, mentioned about the linea splendens. Along with the linea splendens, you have the anterior spinal artery. And uh, here again, you can see radicular arteries uh, along with the nerve roots. Now, I want to mention one more point. You have the nerve roots exiting from this point, And these nerve roots are coming from this much part of the spinal cord. So, this is called a spinal segment. So, from the one spinal segment, you have nerve roots arising and that will exit a little below. Thank you.